We're doing a lot of teases today. We're teasing things at the end of segments. We're teasing aspects of this office that are jarring for anybody who is in person trying to absorb everything, let alone listening to this. I've learned, here's another tease, I've learned that this office, this studio is not actually the new studio. This is the studio before the, did you guys know, that, can I say that? Is that? We're, we're, th 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 that last part, it's not for public consumption, but yeah, this is a, a temporary venue. We're going to be here for an extended period of time. Like, look at our, our digs. These but are. The, dude, it, I, it's, it's, I, I mean, I came here celebrating the new digs, and then I'm being told. What is it about that chair that just makes someone just, just spill all the speak, beans? Speak, leaky faucet, levitard, shit, uh, penalty box. All right, I'll see you later. Jesus Christ. Thank you. Yeah, Please, yeah, but this is th this will be the spot before the spot. But we're going to spend several years here at the El Sur, and we're very excited. But about But the that. point is, Cortez, I, I Ryan Cortez Parakeet is back there. He was in the studio before the studio before the studio. Yeah. It of it offends me the way the people here talk about the Clevelander because when I first visited the Clevelander, I was like, this place is spectacular because I used to go to the studio in Hialeah. There was an absolute dump that Roy used to tell me, be careful where you park your car. Don't park it outside of the lot with the, with uh, the gate. Miami Gardens. Miami Gardens. Yeah, that's, that's a so different really, part. That's a fine. Of you can Miami. actually, you can join. Get into the penalty box. Get out of here. With a penalty box. Go to hell. Heat and five. Yeah. I like the history lesson, though. So yeah. the Clevelander. It started out as a nice studio. Oh, no, just, was a, just was in, I would show up right? as an ESPN employee to do the radio show, to do Highly Questionable, and it was inside of a hotel on South Beach. It was, by every hierarchy, like the number one thing you would like to get assigned to do. It was the closest thing to a vacation. And when I was there yesterday morning, it, 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 it felt like, yeah, it felt like the last scene in Jurassic Park. It felt like, oh, no, this place is um, an experiment gone horribly wrong. And uh, life actually didn't find a way. In the end. <laughs> my only like my my first experience there was freedom where we like basically slept in cots overnight and did the 24 hour marathon. And that was like very quickly the most I ever wanted to spend in the Clevelander was used up in my first weekend. Yeah. Well, you're, remember, your show. first official show in which you zoomed in, we were all excited to have you join the cast, and there was a bomb threat. Yeah. <laughs> and we, we got delayed like an hour and a half. Yeah. So that was my introduction to the Look, Clevelander. I, we got I, off on the wrong foot, that's all. I think uh, the, the discourse around the Clevelander has been very harsh because it was a really good place to us, and it was palatial when we first moved in there. It's just a lot of things happened. Not just the South Beach, that stuff is in the news. The pandemic, there were, look, the, the move from ESPN presented to you by Miller Lite was a difficult one. And there's just a lot of ghosts in that. Not literal, but it's a, it was a mental health minefield. I think oh. literal, too. Yeah. Well, the, it, it, it felt kind of like a hotel designed by young, like young Rob Gronkowski. Yeah. Like if you gave him Who a was also there designer, all the time? I say that because I think the first time I was there, he was there. Yeah, but I, 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 I think in a couple of months, even I'll look back on, on all the time that we spent at the Clevelander rather fondly, and I'll remember the good things. Right now, it's just a little too raw, and we just so outgrew it. No, and, and I come here, and it's a beautiful, new, different hotel. Mike and I, I mean, as I, I'm trying to praise the hotel, and Amin cannot open the door to the studio. That is the sound <laughs> of Amin barging through. <laughs> Yeah. No, oh my gosh! Don't don't, don't. get that hard. No, 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 no! I just saw the entire <laughs> thing move. Yeah, that YouTube.com slash Celebrity Under Friends. Watch Amin destroy the set by trying to enter the room. He's uh, he's going into <laughs> our room. We right need now. to rename the room, by the way. So Mike's going to tell us about his tattoo. But yeah. before we do that, Amin just entered the other side of the glass. It was called the shipping container. I think Roy, tell me if I'm wrong. From the beginning, right? Pre Clevelander, it was the shipping container. No, the, it became the, no. the shipping container in the Clevelander because yeah. there was a an aerial cam, like the, the fixed shot. What were you guys before? Because half of us were in the the what was known as the HQ set when we first started uh, the video product on Fusion. And then the team of producers that was known as a shipping container was in that shipping container room. Right. But the one camera angle, Dan made, made note on the air, because I think a, a listener observation was, they look like a bunch of frightened refugees tra being transported in a shipping container because everyone would just have the fear of God in them when they were called to them because it was a physical disconnect. So you guys, before the Clevelander, before that camera and that glass, did you guys have a nickname? No. So no. I'm trying to figure out what are you we guys... We also didn't have this huge ensemble before the Clevelander. I feel like we look like mission control now. We have like yeah. stadium oh, yeah. control. 
Oh, it, to me, Mission it's, 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 it's wow. we got to figure out a name for what you guys are now. And it does feel like this is a rocket launch. And I'd like to relatedly point out that I just saw this tweet, quote, as if the flight test was not exciting enough, Starship experienced a rapid unscheduled disassembly before stage separation from at SpaceX explaining a rocket exploding today. A rapid unscheduled disassembly is a great euphemism we could for use we that crashed yeah. this rocket. We could use that for a lot of stuff that happens on the show, I feel like. I think the important question is, what does this mean for my blue check? Oh, that's right. Is that going away? We have not done enough 420 stuff today. Yeah, that's a lot Today is 420. Today. It's totally coincidental that I'm here for that, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, oh, what a way that the schedule just shook out for me. Well, Ivy League stuff. Let's tease again, Pablo, because coming up next, we're going to celebrate 420. Oh, that's right. We're actually going to have Jake Plummer. What? You know. The snake? Stugatz hates Jake Plummer. Does he? Because he hates snakes. I hate him. I hate him, Jock. I hate him. Why'd they have to be snakes? Yeah. Get off my plane. Same guy. This is going well. I know. So what happened with your tattoo, Mike? I've got a note from John Skipper saying, please stop the burping sounds. Is that real? Yeah, no, that one's real. <laughs> Coming up next. <laughs> I'm you. getting fired. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up next, find out which ESPN president fires me. <laughs> the answer might shock you. It's a Savannah Bananas. <laughs> they brought me in to be smart. <laughs> Today's a holiday. We have not done nearly enough about how today is a very important holiday to me and specifically to Jake Plummer. And Jake Plummer, I mean, I don't even know where to begin the biography. Certainly, NFL quarterback is the way that I know him. But the way that you should see him on YouTube.com slash and Friends is something that I want to describe visually. Because, Jake, where are you right now, man? Uh, I'm, I'm here in, in the stratosphere of the world. You know, I'm existing here in actual existence in Boulder, Colorado. Uh, that's where I reside. And uh, the great state of Colorado doing a lot of great things to um, make people think and take uh, – take you know their health back in their own hands through nature so it's a lot of fun being here in uh, this beautiful state so immediately i want to point out for everybody that you're wearing on your sweater yeah. <laughs> is that is that your own design can you describe what's on your sweater you seem to be surprised um, that you're wearing a sweater when i mentioned that you have a sweater that i'd like you to describe <laughs> It's a sweatshirt my mom gave me, and it says on the bottom here, Mycology Enthusiast, ah, so, which uh, we all should be. We all should be enthused yes, about yes. mycology uh, as, as we're learning more and more every day. And, uh, you know, I like to wear some stuff with mushrooms on it once in a while, but <laughs> I am a fun guy. So I'm a fun guy and not just fun as in having fun, but I because I like to have fun. I'm, I feel like I am a mushroom. <laughs> <laughs> you, Kawhi Leonard. Yeah, Jake, fun guy. I, I'm curious, how were you introduced <laughs> to the magic of mushrooms? Um, you know, I, I grew up uh, in Idaho and I was around, you know, I, I had a pretty cool family, a really cool family. Uh, a lot of free thinkers, um, obviously some some hippies in there because I was born in the 70s. So uh, I, I'm no stranger to, you know, plant medicine and nature's medicine, uh, you know, with with whether that's cannabis um, or garlic and honey or echinacea or psilocybin. So, you know, th there was really uh, a chance for us as youngsters with our parents and, and the people around us to have an open mind about things, not just jump in and, and believe what society's telling us. And, you know, the war on drugs was a huge push, a huge thing that happened when I was, I think, around the fourth, fifth grade is like, it was big, you know, it was like, just say no, you know, just say no. And um, I was wondering, you know, because I was around some people that, that used cannabis and I, I didn't believe what they were telling us didn't correlate to how they, they were acting and how they thought and the words that came out of their mouths. I mean, these were intelligent, brilliant people. And uh, so I, I immediately had doubt when it came to, you know, stay away from this stuff. I wasn't diving into it as a youngster because I was an athlete and I, I knew that, uh, you know, there was there needed to be focus put on what I wanted to do and the dreams I had. Uh, but I wasn't, you know, hard, hard line, like this is bad. This is bad stuff. I was open-minded and, 
Um, so I knew about it. I, I, I'd been around, you know, plenty of, 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 of nature as, as natural medicine as you could get and uh, continue to have an open mind about it. Well, I want to ask about the relationship between the different aspects of nature that you're passionate about, that you have now redefined your life by as a farmer, as a man who owns and operates a very well-known and well-respected. And this is not just me saying this because you're talking to me. Word has gotten out that you're really good at farming mushrooms, but I want to understand 420 is not a mushroom holiday. So how is this all <laughs> interacting for you? Why, why is this something that you think is, um, is, 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 why are we getting this wrong when we think about what 420 is and how mushrooms figure into it? I, you know, I mean, 420 has been around since they invented the calendar, you know, so we, we put 420 as a day to, you know, 420, it's time to, to smoke some cannabis and get high. Um, but for me, it's more using, using what nature has provided, uh, less about, you know, getting blitzed and, and getting as high as you can and, and wonder what happens. It's more like yeah, using it as medicine, using it to, uh, you know, what, whatever it is that you need, whatever it is you feel that the medicine can help you with to have a sacred relationship with it. So this is a big day. I mean, obviously in Colorado, you know, we, we were the first state to, to decrim and then have recreational. And I was here around that time when uh, I'd had some hip surgeries. I, I used cannabis very sparingly throughout my career. Uh, you know, occasionally would go to a concert in the off season. Uh, you got the hang of it as, as time went. Like, what concert, you Jake? What... what were you, what were you like breaking <laughs> the seal on? Fish. What was worth it to risk uh, it as an NFL player? I, I went and saw Toots and the Maytals. Uh, which was amazing. Uh, Santana, uh, you know, some good bands. You know, I was, again, my family was pretty cool. We listened to a lot of good music, even growing up in Idaho. We had a, we were exposed by my uncle who was a blues DJ in San Fran. So we had a lot of good music, but um, you know, I, I knew, I knew cannabis. I knew what it could do. I'd seen, I'd seen what it could, what it could help you with. And yeah, I didn't use it much during my playing career. It was more as a relief after the game to go back and relax, to drop in with my family to know like I got to cover this tomorrow. We got to go over this whole entire game two or three more times. I'm going to let it go tonight so I can see my family for three, four hours before they leave tomorrow. And, uh, you know, it was a way for me to just like ah, relax and drop in. And so, um, being around, being around it, uh, you know, the, the, the correlation of, of, of mixing whatever cannabis into the mushroom thing. I mean, mushrooms are not a plant. They're an entire queendom in and of itself. So again, it's nature though. It's, it's nature it's they're out there they've been here for a long long time we're just discovering them we're just rediscovering them and re remembering what they've done for us as a civilization as as humans um, we're tapping back into that knowledge and for me anything nature is is what i like to look at as far as any type of optimizing my health and wellness and so mushrooms is an opportunity again and a very misunderstood uh you know organism because most thing, most times you say mushrooms, immediately people are like, "I don't want to trip out," it's, you know. But there's an entire, like I said, an entire queendom. It's it's its own kingdom, but I like to call it a queendom. Yeah, explain the queendom. I just have a I have a good relationship with it being, you know, obviously farming it, farming the mushrooms, which are we we don't we don't grow psilocybin at the farm. We grow functional mushrooms, mushrooms that have been used for centuries in Asia and in the in the Eastern medicine to treat and remedy of many many numerous you 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 name it uh, ailments and disease and so uh you know for me um you know it, it definitely is is something that has opened my mind to the possibilities of health and wellness sure and uh you know being able to incorporate nature and the the queendom is why i call it a queendom is because i feel like it's the mother it's it's like the creator that, that everything down below the ground in the mycelial network down below, it, it communicates with each other. So I feel like mushrooms hold the knowledge of, of strawberries and they hold the knowledge of a cottonwood tree and they hold the knowledge of, of uh, you know, a, whatever you want to call it, whatever. Uh, Malo, <laughs> you know, you go into all these weeds. I mean, anything, they, they work with everything in nature. And I feel like they're the mother. They know everything. Just like a good mom. A mom can nurture you, can feed you, can also like set your ass down and say, listen, <laughs> you're not doing this right. Or you need to think about this. And so I call it a queendom because I think 
this is a, a growing as people, I don't like to call it an industry. Um, and, and we'll get into this as far as why I'm in this sure, is, sure. Is yeah. to bring to it regard and hold it in reverence and not just try to capitalize on what's been here since the beginning of time to now make it our own and, and try to, Oh yeah, this is my tincture and my mushrooms and buy my product. Like, I don't believe that. I just want people to know what's out there. And, and again, like myself over the last four years to just get lit up by the possibilities of what this queendom could hold for us as a hu as humans and are optimizing our health and wellness. Jake, I have a million questions. Same. Uh, <laughs> like I'm, and I have, they're all written down for me, but before I can progress, I was told that you're going to have a joint on you. You're going to light up for us in the middle of this interview because I, I, I need the <laughs> yeah, visual how, stimulation. How are we celebrating the holiday, Jake? We have your philosophy. We have your taxonomy of the queendom, but I feel like we're not appropriately actually setting the mood here. Well, you know, for me, it's a little early to, to wake and bake. I'm not a wake and bake kind of guy. You know, uh, I like to get up and, and do my thing. I, you know, if I was going to, like today, if I'm going to smoke, I'm going to go out on my bike or go play some handball or go on a hike. Um, you know, for me, I, I like I said, it's there's sacredness to this, the nature. And uh, I'm not a I'm not a daily get after it smoking weed guy. Uh, I use it when I need to. And so for me, you know, I, I'm I'm not going to apologize. I just I'm not <laughs> going to roll a joint and light it up right now. So uh, but sometime during the day, Jake, I might, you know, it just Jake, depends. <laughs> Jake is saying that his culture is not our costume yeah also which seven, i respect seven eight six four five six four eight three seven that's the line for wake and bake but jake can you explain the difference i feel like i want to do some explanatory <laughs> journalism here also like there are a lot of people listening to this who are like okay i've seen cannabis get so mainstreamed to the point where it is i live in new york it's fully legal there it is completely unsurprising to see someone lighting a joint and walking around it is it is now like part of people's just daily lives but mushrooms to me psilocybin in specific that is the next thing. And as somebody who has traveled in both worlds, how do you just explain the difference? Like for people who've never taken mushrooms, how do you explain the difference using weed as a bit of context? Yeah, it's, it's again, it's an education for myself and I'm going through it right now. Um, but, but realizing, you know, we worked with the, the, the reason I'm sitting here today, um, we started with, with cannabis, with, with him. Charlotte's Web was who I worked for. Uh, a buddy of mine, Nate Jackson, who I played ball with, knew a guy named Ryan Kingsbury who worked with Charlotte's Web and the Stanley Brothers and presented to us, me, meaning us, me and a group of former players here from in Denver to give it a shot, try this hemp oil. And there was a lot of confusion. Well, what does it do? What, how, do how, how will it make me feel? So I took it and I felt amazing. I felt my inflammation going away. I was able to get down on the ground and play with my kids. I could get up without pain. Headaches that I was having pretty consistently were going away. I felt nature helping me feel better. And it was an education there between THC and hemp. THC gets you psychotropic high. It definitely has its medicinal values, but you will feel the effects of smoking a joint or eating a gummy with THC in it. Whereas hemp, it doesn't do that. Hemp is, is an anti-inflammatory, antioxidant. It works wonders on the body. It was helping these young kids have that were having seizures to actually have a life. And the mothers behind that, uh, Heather Jackson, Paige Feige, Paige Feige uh, mother of Charlotte, they were getting no love and no attention and risking persecution to help their child, to help their children thrive. And so when the athletes, us, these football players all beat up, oh, poor us, came into the picture. We were able to bring light to this, this struggle and, and this plight that they were going on to, to be almost risking persecution to give their child a plant. And so it was a huge educational process. Now hemp is, wild, is, is, is sold at airport kiosks, mm. you know. Yeah, Whole Foods. Uh, Brett Favre yeah. has his own brand. <laughs> Go ahead. What? Not the best cosign, but nonetheless. <laughs> So we're dropping into an entire queendom, an entire queendom that we've only scratched the surface on. I'm looking at my computer here and all these keyboards. We've maybe found two keys and understand what the mushrooms, what those mushrooms can do for us. And the rest of the keyboard is yet to be discovered. So I'm not a mycologist. I'm a mycophile. I, I love 
going out and looking for mushrooms. I love to take my tinctures daily. I love to cook them and can feed you them show, to people. Jay, can yeah. you show us on screen what you are referring to when you talk about your beloved queendom? Do you have, beyond your shirt, you have physical examples. I want to do a little show and tell here. Jake Plummer is scanning the room. Yep. He has gotten up. He is reaching over. There we go. Oh, wow. Here's one, for instance. That's a... This is a reishi mushroom, Ganoderma. I think this is Ganoderma lucidum. It's a California red reishi. We grew these. I dried them out. Quick, quick back, you know, story on this. A lot of the shamans uh, that they that they would exude their graves. They found reishi in their pouches or on a necklace. Reishi is an extremely uh, uh, potent grounding mushroom. It grounds you into the spot you're at, but it also is a connection to the ethereal, to the stars, to the expanse of the universe. So reishi is the mushroom of immortality. And, you know, I, I want to live a really long time. Uh, as how, hard as, how long you know, do you want to live, Jake? How, you have the mushroom <laughs> of immortality. What's the number you're shooting for? <laughs> well, I mean, our souls will go on forever. But me in this physical body right now, I mean, I want to know my great-grandchildren well. And I want to have, wow. you know, my 90th birthday. You're all invited, all the listeners, too, to come to my 90th birthday party at a trampoline park. Like, <laughs> I kind of put my mind Wait, at... <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Jake Plummer. <laughs> 90th birthday party planner give us the vision that you have that we're all now going to attend when you're 90. yeah like that's that's about 42 years from now you know I, I i refuse to buy into the narrative that you're a beat down old football player file your disability get your workers workers uh comp do all this stuff like no nah, the game shouldn't control me like that and i've been able to through through not only using functional mushrooms which is the ter the determining term that we use for legal on the shelves of whole foods natural grocers you name it they're sold they've been sold for a long time they're non-psychedelics but using those along with some psychedelic mushrooms I, I i love psilocybin i think it's a beautiful beautiful organism that's that's we're just learning about we're just figuring yes. out what it can do for us and uh so trampolines yeah, so though tramp i got trampolines i got some psilocybin i got 90 year old jake Plummer in 42 years i have the entirety of the youtube.com slash left and friends audience yep. showing up a lot of people us, what us are too, we all of us are going to yeah. be there but you're yeah i mean we're going to have fun and that's what life's about you know like uh not letting our our physical limitations dictate where we go and i think for me it, it's it's daily. I have to get up and, and figure out how to move my body. I want to stay active. I want to stay as young as I possibly can. And I want to live for a long time. I have children that I want to see grow up. I want to see them have children and hopefully see their children have children. And that's a, that's just what I put out there. Um, of course, anything can happen. We don't get to determine that. But I feel like using these mushrooms has helped me take control of the the functionality of my body. They're, they're, they're amazing adaptogens that help your body function at a high level. And when I'm looking at these athletes that are trying to optimize their, their functionality and optimize their, their little short amount of time in their life that they're at the peak performing, um, I, think, I think they're all underperforming. At least the ones that aren't, are not using functional mushrooms are not optimizing their actual full potential. And it's, it's funny to have come across this post-career but, you know, for me, it's it's a uh, it's a chance to just again go out and spread the spread the word to share my story, to open up people's minds. The curious ones, they reach out. I got a lot of calls. I get a lot of messages. Hey, I'm a former player. I'm having really crazy anxiety and panic attacks all of a sudden. And I can't think clear like, well, yeah, you need some lion's mane, some reishi. Turkey tail helps balance the gut, which your gut is directly connected to our brain and how how well we think. Um, and cordyceps is a natural energy booster with no crash. I mean, these are all time tested ancient organisms that have been around for a long time. And that's what we're putting in our bars, our, our yummy umbo bars. I got to throw that on there. Oh, this there is like, are. this is like counter programming the last of us. Like the cordyceps yeah, the has cord had a real rough run, Jake, the mushrooms yeah. had a real rough run in HBO. And here you are trying to do the opposite. Well, Good. this is the thing. Like if you're sitting there and you're watching binge watching the last of us, and you're did you hate? Of did you hate The Last of Us, Jake Plummer? I've only watched one episode, and it was the first one, and it was pretty hard to deal with. Just there, you know, if you remember the scene, it's just uh, it, it was tough. Anytime you're talking father, you know, yeah. child relationship, it's a little rough. But mm. I'm in the process of watching it. Um, but also, like, I don't have a TV in my house, and I feel like 
<laughs> cordyceps in the show is turning people into zombies. We're here to reverse that effect mm. with mushrooms is turn you from a zombie into a highly functioning human being that can actually remember where you put your keys huh. and recall the names of people that you forgot about Humble. and sleep better, which holy that's been a Sleep concern is for us so today important. on the show. J Jake, yeah. Jake, I have a lot of problems remembering things. My brain isn't quite what it was. Is there any way that you can provide us with some umbo here down at the studio? Maybe of sharpen course. us up. I think it's already on its way, you know, oh. and, and your listeners can check it out too if they go to getumbo.com. Join our newsletter and there's an offering in there for a discount through, through the show here today um, to give it a shot. I'm by no means... You know, people are you're pushing the mushrooms like pushing is is the, is a drug term, right? Like the right. pusher man on the street trying to push this on you. I'm not pushing anything on you. I'm just wanting to have you look at your life, look at how you function and understand that you probably aren't going to be told by your doctor that there is something that helps anxiety other than me telling you you have it, handing you a diagnosis and giving you a prescription for some pill that's probably going to have some side effects that may mess you up even to have to have another pill to correct that problem. Jake, you know, well, reishi is great for anxiety. It helps you uh, uh, approach the anxiety and actually take a deep breath and realize like what matters. Jake, you know, let, what is it? Let me ask you a question. How how much of your decision to walk away from football was dealing with either physical or mental kind of breaking down from doing this? I, I guess like had you known about the magic of all these different mushrooms, the queendom, why you were playing do you think you would have kept playing because you would have been in better shape both physically and mentally um that's a great question it's hard to determine you know what would happen i know that you know as a tail end of my career uh post game i was i was again using cannabis for the fact of like as a as a for inflammation to be able to rest to be able to just shut it off and go to sleep um, and also it started getting me thinking a little bit like how long do i want to play this game how long am i going to take this childhood dream uh to chase this super bowl trophy in oh in oh five we we made it to the afc championship game and nobody knew this uh i did in my heart i was ready to win the super bowl to have the mvp trophy and on stage say peace out nfl <laughs> this is what i came for i'm done with this because it was hard on my body it was hard on me physically and spiritually to give it my all and then to, to be in an environment where you really it was hard to please everybody. Everybody was always wanting more. Like you could do better. Or I'd have a great game. And coach Shanahan would point out, you could have had a better game. I'm like, God damn. I threw for 300 yards, two touch, three touchdowns and interception. We beat them by 21 points. What do you mean? I could have played better. Like <laughs> did, we you won ever, the game. did you ever wish you could just micro dose Mike Shanahan? <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of people that need to get a microdose. That, <laughs> Can and we get your top could, three list of people you top would five. You, top five list of people you could have microdosed in your it's NFL fine. career? <laughs> we have Mike oh, Shanahan God. somewhere on the list, but I actually am curious, Jake. Seriously, who do you think could have benefited that actually was you know just on the wrong side of the aisle? I think at that Tom, point? maybe not a microdose, but like a full on like. Oh yeah, we go macrodose too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give us the ceremonial. Sitting Dosage. with it, yeah. Uh, God, there. I mean, there's so many people that I think could uh, could benefit. Um, but again, we're 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 moving into a sensitive area that's like, this isn't something to toy around with. This isn't just like, yeah, jump in and take a bunch Jake, of this, every these every mushrooms. every bit of set and setting should be considered. Yeah. I, you would be the shaman. Yeah. So in this world who are you drafting your top five nfl draft picks <laughs> okay. for a ceremonial shamanic macro dose experience with jake Plummer are so there do they have to be nfl personnel or people in the nfl or can it be anybody it'd be anybody let's open it up okay well, i'm going to try to stay a little nfl centric here so that it's more go. down the line of the fans they may know um definitely uh roger goodell uh -oh. uh, he, he needs it Shanahan would definitely benefit. Yeah. But now I think, you know, Coach Shanahan's moved into a different phase of his life. So I, I have a real good relationship with him. Um, but, but at it'd the be time, interesting to, to go yeah, back in I, time, yeah. I, it'd be interesting to see how he re re would respond. Myself, I would want to sit. I would want to definitely, when I was playing, I would definitely want to go deep and figure out, you know, what the world is about, try to become one again and, and see if, if with that knowledge I could uh, influence the guy, the people around me even more yeah. to, like, seek – 
the trophy, seek the prize. You'd like to visit yourself in this shamanic context. So I believe that's number three. Yeah, that's three. Um, Gosh, let me, that's a tough, it's a pretty tough question. I've never really thought about this. Um, But you did ask me the clarification, NFL or everything. So I feel like you do have at least a name that's outside the scope of the NFL. that You're like, this person really could use it. Yeah, I mean, I think a, I think a guy, someone like a Donald Trump could definitely uh, benefit from maybe getting out of his own head and his own ego and realizing, like, we're all one. We're all, like, connected I here. I thought he so. was pretty much already out of his mind, so. <laughs> <laughs> he may be tripping already on something. Who knows? It's Because sometimes, you know, you got to think he is tripping. Uh, the last one, that's a tough one. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with... Uh, Probably my dad, you know? I think my dad could benefit. I think he would definitely have a... Uh, Wait a minute, Jake. You, you've now revealed that, okay, your your dad, despite all of it, you, you have not yet converted your dad to this shamanic experience. It's an interesting thing. You can't, you can't go push this on people. You can't go tell them this is what you need. You have to present it, and then they show up. And so there's no way that I can go and tell my dad, this. come over here, you got to do this. I have presented it. And when the time's right, if he wants it, he knows where to go. He knows how to ha- make it happen. Um, again, this is something I, I hold really in high regard as a sacred, sacred medicine. And so not to be toyed with and definitely to be researched and understood. Unlimited Sciences, unlimitedsciences.org is a, a nonprofit that Del Jolly, my partner with Umbo, and Rashad Evans, who's our other co-founder, uh, we started Unlimited Sciences so people could Sugar. call in and understand and have responsible conversation about this so that, you know, there's the trips aren't always going to be like happy and come out of this joyous. Things are going to come up and things are going to get become, you're going to have realizations of like life and, and you have to have someone there to support you. It's definitely, it made me appreciate community much more than I did in the past. And I realized I lived in community when I was a football player. I mean, I was a quarterback, a very high highly uh looked at and, and and you know over analyzed position in a billion dollar organization um but i was able to to you know bring those guys together and so again it's community is huge having that support um but you know this this isn't all just about psilocybin that's one one strain of this yeah, entire well, well, queendom well, well, well jake at the very end here i just want to then officially offer you this job in my power as new metal arc employee will you be metal arc media's resident shaman would you take that job? It's an unpaid position, but for the audience. Yes, I will take it. I just yeah. have to, I will take it. <laughs> Jake Plummer. <laughs> the snake. <laughs> we love you. Thank you. Thanks, Jake. Thank you guys so much. It's great to get on the show. Appreciate the opportunity I'm, to to share with the curious people out there. I'm serious about the umbo, and I'm also serious about your 90th birthday. Yeah, see you in 42 years. Yeah. Right on, brother. You guys be well. Happy holiday. Talking to Jake Plummer, my main takeaway is that we are not. Can we dose someone here today? Like, we have not. uh, He's not Jake. We didn't get. Jake Plummer agreed to be our shaman, our psilocybin shaman, but also refused to smoke a joint on air. And I feel like we're not doing our job. I mean. It was 9 a.m. for him, to be fair. (laughs) Like, he was like, come on, guys. You guys have East Coast bias over here. Like, what is it? So it's almost noon. Go ahead. Light up one and, and take some shrooms, dude. Honestly, right now I'm sober and loving it. Oh, okay. So I, I'm surprised you didn't jump in on the queendom. We all, like, we all reacted and we're looking at you and you were literally like, she was all on TikTok. Uh, I got a lot of thoughts. No, I was actually finishing the hard Sudoku today. I got it. By the way. <laughs> oh, congratulations. Minutes. There was like such a fine line with that sort of stuff. And then like the, the wellness community extremists that are like don't get cancer treatment i'm from afraid your of going to the website he mentioned Smoke i'll say that instead. i like don't there's... co-sign the website i'll have to do my own research <laughs> into his research uh, but yeah, but but speaking of stuff. ongoing investigations i went to the website yeah, and it that? asked me if dan levitard sent me the get oh. umbo website not the other website he mentioned not the oh. other website not the other website. straight up asked you did dan levitard send you that's so great speaking of ongoing investigations mike what 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 the what the why fuck? am I a tattoo guy now? Yeah. All right. So uh, the, to close a loop on on the preview show, there was, there was a caper involved in which I was ghosted by the guy that did the palm tree on my leg. Uh-huh. I was waiting outside of his condo, and he just ghosted me mm. after he does the tattoos out of his condo. 
Yeah, well, he failed to mention that. I actually went to the shop, and they told me, oh, he no longer works here. He failed to mention that part. Yeah. And so I show up to his. He's like, yeah, I'll see you tomorrow. I'm like, no, you told me you'd see me tomorrow yesterday. Yeah. Today is tomorrow. He's like, all right, come, come by, dude. And he's like, actually, no, I'm tattooing somebody. Come by at 8. So I go by at 8, and it's just – it was a horrible story. He kept my deposit for two months. He finally paid me. Yeah. He finally paid me two days ago, and he paid me with Apple Cash. Nice. I don't have Apple Cash. <laughs> no, I just have this hundred dollars sitting there. I have to tether it. It's the most inconvenient no, way. I you can zelled him. I zelled him the deposit. Paid you me back. Dave and Buster's tickets. Yeah, basically. No, Apple How do you Cash. Cash out Apple Cash. You mean? have to tether it to your. You bank don't cash account. it out. You use it. For what? You sp- you pay off stuff like subscriptions. What? No, stuff? no. So like whenever you do Apple Pay. It, there's an option there. It says, "Do you oh. want to use Apple Cash?" No one has ever in the history of Apple Cash p- used Apple Cash. I have. No. I use it to pay for parking, like you know those uh, Park Mobile apps or whatever. Like yeah. The, the meters that are w- with an app. Yes. I've never been prompted. I always pay. I always pay with the cash. I've always. Whenever That's... I hit that, it, it automatically goes to my credit card. You're gonna have to teach me. But anyways, he you. paid me in the most annoying way possible, which is like yeah. true to form. But I had since gotten <laughs> two more tattoos. That's how long it took dude, for this dude to pay how me. How many tattoos do you have now? I think eight. Pieces. Oh, I thought you were going to say pieces. seven. And loving it. <laughs> <laughs> and loving it. I am it loving go. being a tattoo guy, though. And I've waited at an appropriate amount of time. And I would always encourage our audience as we're trying to preach responsibility. These are permanent, as you know. Don't let it. What is with Wait, everybody? Jake Plummer is preaching responsibility. Mike Ryan is preaching responsibility. I'm just saying, if Fat I was, Joe, get, Fat Joe preached responsibility too. Fat just responsibly. saying, yep. if I if I were getting tattoos when I was 18 years old, I might have a Fred Durst and a backwards red cap on my body nice. right now. So just be be I'm, cognizant that these things might be phases. So if you're early in the game, I would space your pieces out to make sure that you're not just going through a phase. We're a very lightly tattooed show, right? Like you, Cortez, but everyone... I'm, Tony, you already got one, oh, right? Juju. Oh, I don't Juju, have any, yeah. yeah. Juju. I'm intrigued, though. Yeah. Uh, so, like, don't count me out. Yeah, Lewis has tattoos, but I think uh, well, Lewis. I think Tony would absolutely love my tattoo artist because I found out after the fact that uh-huh. I have a celebrity tattoo artist that does Bieber, Beckham, Bad Bunny, Wait. your guy Jay. All the Cole. bees. Yeah, tattoo Bieber, panda. Beckham, shout out Bad Bunny. Shout out Panda. Jay Bowl. B Bowl. I'm loving it. Oh man. Thank you. 